Welcome to our presentation of Troglo Who, all about cave life, presented by Lincoln Caverns. Caves have been forming for millions of years. While all this has been happening, many forms of living things have been using the cave for a home. Odd and different forms of life dwell in the cave system. Biologists studying cave life divide the cave into three zones, the entrance zone, twilight zone, and dark zone. Some cave animals visit more than one zone, while others stay only in one part of the cave system. What animals do you think might live in caves? Of course, when we think of caves, we think of bats, but there are lots of other things that can use the cave for a home. Cave animals are divided into three categories based on the amount of time they spend in the cave. All animals who use or live in caves have special adaptations for living in the cave environment. There are lots of special conditions of the cave environment that animals need to adapt to to survive. Caves are naturally dark, have constant temperature, the average year-round temperature of the air outside. High humidity, they're very damp. And there's a limited food supply. Troglozines are cave visitors. This comes from the Greek word troglos, meaning cave, and xenos, meaning guest. Troglozines do not spend their entire life in the cave. They seek the cave out by choice. They do not depend on the cave environment for food. So some examples of troglozines are bats, bears, skunks, raccoons, moths, and people are troglozines too. Let's take a closer look at our favorite troglozine, the bat. Bats have special adaptations to survive in the cave, to use the cave for shelter and to hibernate there. They use echolocation to navigate in the dark. They have long sensitive whiskers around the mouth to help feel for nearby insects and other bats. When a bat hibernates, moisture collects on their fur. They may wake up and take a drink from this water. Bats also have stiff hairs on their tail membrane and can feel when something touches them. Bats have clawed thumbs to help them scurry along the cave rocks. And they do not waste energy to stay warm. When they hibernate, their body temperature drops to that of the cave. Their clawed toes are useful for gripping rocks. Bats live on stored body fat while hibernating, so we should never disturb hibernating bats. If they must use some of that stored energy, they might not survive the winter. Troglophiles are cave lovers, from the Greek word troglos, meaning cave, and phileo, meaning love. They can live in the dark zone of a cave, but also travel through the twilight and entrance zone as well, in case they need to go outside to search for food. Examples include earthworms, frogs, beetles, cave crickets, harvestmen, and salamanders. Let's take a closer look at a troglophile, cave crickets, are troglophiles that we have in abundance in our caves. Only male cave crickets have wings. Cave crickets don't chirp like their above ground cricket relatives. They're nicknamed camel crickets because of their humped back. And they have tiny hooks on each foot to help them cling to the cave walls, even upside down. Their extra long antenna are very sensitive. They can sense danger and help them find food. They have small eyes, much smaller than their above ground crickets, 
and they don't work very well. Their brown coloring helps them blend in with their surroundings in the cave, and their strong back legs help them leap from danger. The third category of cave animal is a troglobite, which means cave dweller, from that Greek troglos meaning cave and bios meaning light. They spend their entire life in caves, total darkness and uniform environment. They have many special adaptations to survive in total darkness. They could not survive outside of the cave. These are some examples of troglobites. We have a small amphipod like a mini shrimp that would live in the water of the cave, a cave flatworm, cave centipede, and a crayfish. We're gonna take a closer look at a cave fish. They're partly see-through because they have no pigment or skin color. Our pigment protects us from the rays of the sun, but of course the sun's rays never reach where these fish live. The pinkish color we see is caused by blood in their bodies. The lateral line on each side of their bodies are sense organs, which detect the smallest vibrations in the water. Some young fish have small eyes, but after about two weeks, skin grows over their eyes since they have no need for them. Their backbone acts as a hearing aid, making sound waves louder. They also have sensory hairs that dot their body to help them find food. Cave fish are believed to feed at infrequent intervals. They are adapted to a very limited food supply. Even though these creatures live deep in caves. Cave animals still need help from the outside world to survive. Organic matter like bat guano that you see at the bottom of the food pyramid is brought in, of course, from the outside. And it's really, really important to every other creature that lives in the cave system. Thank you for joining us today. Check out our cave life activities available to your teacher at the, in the teacher's area at lincolncaverns.com. And we're going to introduce to you in just a moment our favorite cave animal adaptation activity, an uh, activity for you to design the ultimate cave animal. So stay tuned. Have a great day.